All right. Hello, everybody. John Foster, talking tennis with John Foster. I have a special treat today. I have Sammy Giamalva with right. me today. And we're going to talk to Sammy. We've been talking a little bit about his life and his playing career, <clears throat> how he got there, uh, what inspired him, his goals, everything. So welcome, Sammy. Thank to, you, John. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. So um, we were talking a little bit already, and um, your dad was a great tennis player. Uh, you want to he, talk he, about him? Well, a little he played bit? Davis Cup in the in the late '50s, right. and uh, um, actually made the finals of the U.S. Open and doubles, or the U.S. Nationals it was back then. But he was he was a great player. He, he had a very short career because it was amateur back then. Right, there was no money in. So it. yeah, so when my uh, they were traveling around the circuit when my brother was born, and he actually got a little he had a trach and hospital bill, so he went back to work and. So he only played like the U.S. Open or U.S. Nationals one time, and uh, Wimbledon once and stuff. But he did play he did. Davis Cup. And yeah. then he, they, they say that he was the Nadal, or I've heard this, the Nadal of that, that day, or Luis Ayala too. Yeah, yeah. But my he, father, yeah, my father was more like a, he, it's good serving volley or a good, right. you know. But he's a, he was a great player. Great. And Davis Cup, seven and two, seven and three record, and they won it for. America twice, right? He's I don't think my, my f they made the finals and they lost to Australia the year my, my mm. dad. They played Hode and Rosewell in the challenge round. And, so, and from the, at the time, it was the biggest crowd that ever watched it. Never match. watched Davis but, Cup. Yeah, right? but it was a, it was a uh, he, my dad played really well, but he lost in uh, four sets to, to each of them. But See, that's amazing. And that's the one thing that the, the kids nowadays and the players nowadays, I'm doing this, I want to bring education to everybody. The tennis players are lucky nowadays. They make millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And I was looking at Sammy's stuff last night, and he didn't even know that, you know, little under prize money, under a million dollars. And I know my partner, my doubles partner that we played nationals at 5.5, he was 60 years old, I was 30, USTA, mm -hmm. Ray Garrido, the top Cuban tennis player ever, mm -hmm. he couldn't, he quit professional tennis and played right. professional highlight because he couldn't make any money. Right. And he played with Laver and Rosewell, all those guys, but right. there was no money. Right, yeah, no, I know like uh, Owen Davidson, I, I think he made the final, when he went made the finals of the U.S. Open doubles, he made like $1,500. Oh, I made the quarters of the Australian singles, I think my paycheck was six or 7000 I think. So it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't uh, as big, but I was just kind of on the verge where, where big money was kind of coming in the was, game, so I, I was pretty lucky. Uh, got a little piece of yeah, it, but endorsements got, helped you yeah, out. Yeah, I got really good endorsements, and so I just the beginning of that. A little bit, a little bit of pressure with those endorsements? Yeah, yeah. a little bit, but, but it was, yeah. yeah. So you achieved all your, your goals. We were talking a little bit. He's a goal setter, and this is something that I recommend to all the kids. You've got to write it down. And Sammy wrote it down in the account. I've written down my goals and accomplished goals. You can think about it, but you've got to write it down. Right. What, you, and tell us about goals a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, when I was 14, I set, I set uh, goals for every year from 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20, what I wanted to accomplish. And uh, um, so, like, when I was 15, I wanted to be, like, top 15 in the nation. And 16, I wanted to uh, be one in the nation. And then 17, I wanted to be one of the nation 18s. And then when I was 18, I wanted to be 50 in the world. Accomplish all those. When I got to 19, I wanted to be uh, top 10 in the world. That didn't happen in 20. So they didn't, the others didn't happen, but it did. It helped writing it down, knowing what my goal was. It really kind of made it more tangible and real. That's instead important, of, kids. You got to write it down. Yeah, otherwise you get lost. Uh, you know, oh, I, I think I wanted to be top, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, but if but you then, write it down, then it's a commitment. Right, and that's kind of why you asked me why I like and to do this show is I want to teach kids. It's not, yeah. you know, but, but I think it's also important not to get too attached. You know, if you don't make it, it's just okay. I, I, you know, I want to be top ten. I'm twenty. Okay, well, let's let's next year goes on. Let, let's see. Change it. Yeah. yeah, you can always change them. You're yeah, you write them down. Adjust, but adjust. you adjust. And uh, but don't get too because sometimes you're not completely in control of. Right. Of making that, right. So. And traveling on the tour, it's, it's a hard life. You know, people don't realize. They say, well, I want to be a tennis pro. Well, uh, you know, first thing I say to them is, do you, do you like hotel rooms and you like the fly? If you don't like the fly. It's a hard, it's a, it was very difficult for me. I think uh, I started the tour very young. And so you're in a hotel, you're alone. Um, 
and it's uh, I I didn't particularly actually enjoy the tour. Right. I loved tennis and I loved junior tennis, but the professional tour was really hard. It's just uh, you know you're traveling 40 weeks a year, you don't have any responsibilities to anyone other than yourself, and so mm. it's a it's a it's kind of a lonely existence. You got to be on it yourself. Yeah. 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 Um, when you uh, your your father was a good inspiration for you um, and a great father from what you've told me you want yeah. to say a little bit about how and, and most fathers aren't like this you want to ex- tell well, us I about can't your say dad enough about my dad my dad was he's at first he was just a great dad both my parents were really loving supportive kind uh, it's it's even not today, pushing they, they, not push, they my were, dad was a great uh, motivator and uh, he made things really fun everything was a game uh, there was no pressure I never, uh, um, he, he kind of like, it was all about my, my goals and my, it wasn't about him. It, it was so, it, he just kind of, he had a really great knack of making tennis fun, uh, yeah. really encouraging, making me believe I can do it. Right. That that's what I want to do. He always say, hey, you know, you set your mind to doing something, you can do it. You just right. got to make up your mind you're going to do it. And, uh, and really made me believe that. Right. And so he was a great, he was just support. He, yeah, and just the whole experience was positive, and that's why I'm still in tennis now. I'm right. 56 years old, and I still love being around the game and love, uh, love being around my parents too. But, right. But, you know, but so it's, it's just a great experience. I you have. got this beautiful club here, the Giamalva Racquet Club, Stanley. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Okay. We'll do another segment on Sammy's Club, but Giamalva okay. Racquet Club. Right. You want to say a little bit about where he's got the top juniors right now going on. You have a top junior right now. Yeah, I mean, we have some great juniors out there, and they're super hard workers. It's super inspiring uh, to get to work with them. It's a joy. They're a joy to work with every day because they give you so much, and they try so hard, and uh, and they're just fun. It's just, it's just fun being with that and seeing them pursue their goals and their careers and develop you know their inner confidence and that they can achieve whether they become tennis players but it's just really fun well, i would recommend anybody to come check out sammy's club here and look into the program if you want to become a player or you are a player and you want to take your your game to the next level if you don't come see me come see sam now right. this is this is a beautiful club they got the gym uh yeah. i'd say pretty world class i'd say set up for for the kids that want to train full time, he has yeah. an academy. Right. And your brother was a great player too. Uh, yeah, my brother so, played the circuit yeah. with me, yeah. so that was really fun. We actually we we uh, some played some doubles together, yeah. so it was fun. We the last tournament he played, that he retired, we won the Seiko, the Tokyo Seiko. Doubles. Wow! Oh, you did. That's great. And pretty. so it was a great way for us to uh, for him to go out for for me to have that experience with him. But uh, yeah, it was really fun having him on the. That's, that's great, Sammy. Thank you. We're going to do another segment, and you can okay. see about, about Sammy's okay. Club. We'll talk about that, and we're also going to uh, talk about ambidextrous tennis, get Sammy's okay. uh, viewpoint on that, because I'm working with that with kids 10 and under, and we really haven't talked about it, but we're going to get in that. Thank you, All right. Sammy. All right. Thank All right. you, John. All right.